Hey guys, it's Miss Miller. Hope you had a great spring break. Um, I wanted to finish chapter 5.2 with y'all. Today, I had you kind of do a trig review of geometry and some of that we're gonna go over more today. Um, some of that was just kind of an intro. I hope you found it to be a little bit easy. Um, and if you have any questions, hopefully today's video will help clarify it. And if not, we can go over more in person. I wanted to maybe do a Google Meet um wednesday or thursday let me know if anyone is interested if you email me then i can put that together if you're not interested i understand um we'll start five three um next video all right so the last things that are in this chapter is finding acute angle measures so and also opposite sides using trigonometry um also finding angles of elevation and depression so when I say finding an acute angle is when you're given cosine of theta, theta is gonna represent an acute angle. And here the directions ask us to find to the nearest degree. That's really important that your calculator's mode is in degree when you're doing this. Um, to check that on the scientific calculator, in the bottom corner, it'll say DEG for degree and RAD for radian. Your graphing calculator defaults to radian mode um, when you clear it. So just always make sure you go into mode and change to degree. We're gonna go back and forth there today. You can change the mode in the TI-84 by pressing mode and scrolling down to degree and hitting enter. So for cosine of theta equaling 0.8953 in degree mode, we're gonna solve. So what we're trying to find is isolating theta. So prior to this, I told you never to use the inverse um of cosine but now we are because we're going to try to undo that function so we're going to take cosine inverse of both sides so if you see here i take cosine inverse of cosine which cancels it out it's like the inverse of addition is subtraction and they cancel each other out so cosine inverse and cosine cancel each other out so i'm just left with theta so that ends up being that theta equals the cosine inverse of 0.8953. What you're going to do is type that exactly into your calculator. To get cosine inverse, what I'm going to do here real quick. Let's see if I can pull this up. Cosine inverse. Cosine inverse. So you press your second button and you want cosine inverse. Notice right here, I can already see if I have to change radian to degree mode. So I'm going to go second and go to, sorry, no second, mode, move down to degree and hit enter. And I can quit, finish where I left off. 0 0.8953. Five, And so you type it in exactly like that, cosine inverse again, it should be in either light blue or something like that on your scientific or graphing calculator. You hit enter and we get our answer. So let's go back to our presentation. So we got in degree mode again, it's very important. Data is 26.495, sorry, 453, it kept going. But since we want to round to the nearest degree, we just get 26. So now you'll notice on your graphing calculator, on your scientific calculator, you don't have a cosecant inverse button. So this is where we need to really know our identities and knowing that the um, inverse identity for cosecant is sine. So if you notice, we can now rewrite this. So cosecant of theta equaling four thirds, well sine of theta then equals three over four. Now you can use sine inverse sine inverse to both sides of the equation, sine inverse will cancel out our sine, leaving us just with theta. So I'll have theta equaling the sine inverse of three over four, which I get is four point, sorry, 48.5903. And again, since we want to round to the nearest degree, we'll have 49 degrees, always putting that label four degrees. All right. The other thing you are going to be asked to do is finding acute angles to the nearest radian, but we're not actually going to go to the nearest radian because radians 
Again, we normally measure in terms of pi, but when we're estimating it, we want to give a couple of decimal places. So we're going to round to at least three decimal places here. So if I have the sine of theta is equal to seven, sorry, 0 0.7071, just like we did with cosine before, we're going to take cosine first. But again, when you go to calculate, we now want to be in radian mode. All right. So we take sine inverse of both sides. That cancels out. So we're left with theta equaling sine inverse of 0 0.7071. And we're going to make sure we evaluate in radian mode. And we want to three decimal places, so I have 0 0.785 because this three right here, we're not going to round up. And we want to put the label radians. You don't attach a pi or anything to it. It's just radians. All right. Similar to what we had before, there is no cotangent inverse. Tan inverse is not the same as cotangent. So we want to use our inverse property, though, to rewrite this. So if the cotangent of theta equals 25 over 21, then I use my inverse property to state tangent of theta equals 21 over 25. And then I can do tan inverse, since that's what's available to me on my graphing or scientific calculator. Again, we're still in radian mode, taking tan inverse of both sides. We are canceling out our tangents. So theta then just equals the tan inverse of 21 over 25. So I get 0 0.698659. It keeps going. And we want to round to three decimal places. So I'll end up with 0 0.699 radians. Again, please put that label for radians. Um, we don't have a little symbol like we do for degrees. So this is important for us when we're applying it to triangles. So we have two triangles here, similar to what you saw in your review yesterday, but we're going to quickly go over it. When you're asked to solve for a missing side, you're going to round to the nearest whole number. So we're looking for a missing side. What's given to us if I'm given 60 degrees. Now you could figure out that the complementary angle is obviously 30 and do a different um, trigonomic function. But for now, based on what's given, I have my angle of 60 degrees. Now we need to be in degree mode. Notice I'm making it go back and forth. Degree mode, and I have the adjacent side, and I have my hypotenuse. So that is our cosine function. So I can write the cosine of 60 degrees equals x over 12. To solve this, I can first just multiply by 12 to both sides. Doing that cancels out my 12. And then I just have that x equals 12 times the cosine of 60. As long as you're in degree mode, because we're dealing with degrees, um, you can just put this right into your calculator, which will end up actually giving you x is 6, because the cosine of 60 is a very nice um, number to evaluate. All right. Going forward, if we take a look, now I have the angle measure of 20. I have the opposite side of 25, and I have the adjacent side. So that's going to either give us tangent or cotangent. It's up to you with what you would like to do. I wrote that the tangent of 20 degrees equals 25 over x. Now, you can do this one of two ways. You could multiply by x to both sides and then divide by the tangent of 20. Or what I did was I just did the inverse of both sides. So I did the reciprocal. As long as you do it to both sides, you're um, or just you're fine. So if you write it as 1 over the tangent of 20 degrees or x over 25, the same as saying the cotangent of 20 degrees. I can plug this into my calculator value by say, typing 1 divided by the tangent of 20. That will give me 2.74747419. It's important you don't round too early when you're calculating. If you just put 2.7, you're not going to get the right answer. Multiply by 25 to both sides. And we get x is 68.6869. Now, I've seen so many students that put a degree symbol and think that you're done remembering that we're not finding an angle. We're finding a side of the triangle. And we want to round to the nearest whole number. So we're going to say x is 69. All right. What comes into importance now is solving when you are wanting to find the angle measure, knowing what's given to you. We have the adjacent side 8, and we have the hypotenuse of 10. So that is going to give us the cosine of theta to get us 8 over 10. Now it's back to what we just first talked about at the beginning of this unit, where you take cosine inverse of both sides, and we will get 
that theta is equal to cosine inverse of eight over 10. If you want to simplify that to be four over five, that's completely fine, but um, you can leave it just as eight over 10. Plugging that into your calculator, notice your directions ask you for the nearest degree, so double check that you're in degree and you haven't changed that out. And you will get that theta is equal to 36.869897, which rounds to 37 degrees. Always making sure you label it as degrees or radians, depending on what you're calculating. The last part of this unit is talking about angle of elevation and depression. And knowing geometry, you guys talked about this, um, but I want to just kind of go over it. Your line of sight for L angle of elevation is your um, horizontal angle, and then the vertical distance from the object forms a right angle. The hypotenuse is your line of sight, depending on where you're looking. If you're looking up, it's your angle of elevation. Your angle of depression is actually from the object to the person. You could also say the horizon or the horizontal distance this way, and here is also your angle of depression when it's opposing this, but we use this side. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more of that. So we'll give some examples. Our first example is you sight a rock climber on a cliff at 32 degrees angle of elevation. So you know where to put our angle of elevation from where you see the rock climber at the top of the cliff. The horizontal ground distance, horizontal again being left to right. So we have the base of a thousand feet Find the line of sight to the rock climber, line of sight being your hypotenuse. So now, again, we have our cosine, so I'm going to set that up. The cosine of angle 32 degrees equals 1,000 over x. To solve this, um, I'm going to show you the other way I first mentioned, which is multiplying by x to both sides. So I have x times the cosine of 32 degrees and then divide by cosine of 32 degrees. You're just rearranging it so that x is isolated. And then you can type this all in at once, just making sure you're careful with what you're typing in, or evaluate cosine 32 degrees, and then do a 1,000 divided by it, and we will get that x is about 1,179 feet. That is the line of sight. When we're dealing with angle of depression, for this problem, a ship's sonar locates a treasure chest at an angle of depression of 12 degrees. So here is the water line, right? Angle of, 12, uh, of depression is going to be 12 degrees, as I talked about before. Also, from what you remember of um, interior angles or alternate interior angles, I should say, of parallel lines, the base of the ocean, the water line are normally parallel when you're calculating these things. So this would also be equivalent. So it's angle 12 degrees down here for our angle of depression. A diver is lowered 40 meters to the floor. So we're going down from the boat to the floor, which is 40 meters. I'm now seeing that I have the opposite side and the adjacent side because I'm looking how far the diver needs to swim along the floor. So it's not diagonally from the boat, the line of sight, but how far he has to go horizontally. So we're going to look for X. So given that we have 12 degrees, <clears throat> The opposite side is 40 and the adjacent side is x. We have our tangent function. So we have the tangent of 12 degrees equals 40 over x. Similarly to our last problem, we're going to rearrange this by multiplying by x to both sides and then getting that x equals 40 over tangent of 12 degrees. When you calculate that, you'll get about 188 meters. So there's going to be some textbook work for this unit for us to finish. And if you have any questions, please let me know. And I hope you all are doing well. I miss you.